Hey guys, this is Sajad Daya, CEO of Sparkster, and we're here today at the Blockchain Expo in London. So my favorite question that I've been asked today is 10 million transactions a second. That cannot be true. That's got to be rubbish. So let me talk about how that's possible. And, and I'm really excited to share this with you. And hopefully I'll convince you that, you know, this is a reality. So the first thing to understand is that we're a specialized blockchain. And what that really means is, is that we do one thing really, really well. And some other case, you know, in some cases we can't do uh, other things, right? So as you might see behind us, we're demonstrating the Sparkster platform, which allows people to build software without writing any code. And that's all well and good, and you guys can check out the demos of that on our YouTube channel. But let's talk about what we're really here to talk about, which is the Sparkster decentralized cloud, and the claim that we're making that 10 million transactions a second can be processed on the Sparkster decentralized cloud. Well, I wanna give it to you guys, hopefully in clear terms, on how that's possible. So, the first thing to understand is that the Sparkster platform allows people to build software in plain English. And the software that's built in plain English ends up being small components that get connected together to build an application, right? Now imagine you could take those small components and you could run them on people's mobile phones. So you can imagine that those mobile phones are like compute nodes in the public cloud. So why would you even want to do that? Well, think about some of the costs that AWS and Microsoft Azure have. Well, they're gonna pay for physical storage, they're gonna pay for a physical server, they're gonna pay for you know, physical security, they're gonna pay for backup power, they're gonna pay for cooling. Well, on your mobile phone, do you have to pay for any of those things? I think you'd agree the answer is no. So if we can get to a place where software can run on people's mobile phones, well, we're at a place where that's the, that's the end of cloud computing because there's almost no cost to running a piece of software on someone's mobile phone. So how does that relate to what we're talking about here and how do we get to 10 million transactions a second? So I want you to imagine two companies. Suppose that we've got General Electric and General Motors. So General Electric, can, would, you, would General Electric ever need to have their customer data together with General Motors customer data? I think you'd agree that the answer is no, they wouldn't. And that's the key insight here. What we're able to do is we're able to build, as the, as the blockchain grows, we're able to you know, break off clusters of the blockchain and say that, okay, well, General Motors data will exist in one cluster and General Motors, uh, 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 General Electric's data will exist in a completely different cluster. And so if those clusters never need to communicate with each other, what I really mean by that is they have different distributed, distributed hash tables that never need to synchronize, then we can, we, have, we can have parallelism and concurrency. And specifically what that means is that as the transactions are arriving from General Motors, we can send them to their cell or their cluster of, of, of nodes. And as transactions are arriving from General Motors, we can send them to its own cell or cluster of nodes. And we can do that in parallel. So we're using something called Federated Byzantine Agreement System, which was first really conceived and invented by Ripple. And it was proven mathematically by Stellar. And, what, and so what we've seen with those two networks is they can process at least a thousand transactions a second. So a thousand transactions a second, and we're seeing, we're seeing more than a thousand transactions a second today in each one of our cells. If a thousand transactions a second could be executed in one cell, and imagine that's GE, and a, and a thousand transactions a second could be executed in another cell, and that's GM, then in parallel, concurrently, we have 2,000 transactions a second. That's how we get to millions of transactions a second, because we can take those cells and we can replicate them, meaning we can, we can break them apart and isolate them, and we've got parallel execution. This is obviously important because what we need to do is we need, what we need is we need a blockchain that can support millions and millions of companies all over the world. And so what we're really presenting is a way for millions and millions of companies to, 
to adopt a public blockchain. A blockchain that's highly secure. All the day, all the transactions on this network are secured, are, are, are private using ZK Snarks, which really comes from Zcash. But interestingly enough, imagine that someone wants to build a really large application, something like, let's say, akin to Amazon.com. Well, what we can do is with these cells, we can have one cell that, that has all of the customers whose name begins with A, and another cell with all of the customers whose name begins with B. Now, would Aaron's customer transaction history, you know, if Aaron's customer transaction history is in cell A, does he ever need to see Ben's customer transaction history? He doesn't, so we can isolate it. So fundamentally, this is how we can build decentralized systems and decentralized software that can scale to millions and millions and millions of transactions per second. Thank you very much for your time.